Okay, welcome back. It's Friday, the end of the world, and uh, if you can hear me, we're probably safe. Winter begins today, and uh, stand by because the next end of the world scenario probably will be coming along before you know it. These people who made money on the end of the world, 2012, December 21st, or the 23rd, whichever it is. I uh, should be ashamed of themselves, of course, but that's entrepreneurial capitalism at work, some would say. I would say no, it's taking advantage of people who are easily victimized in this age and cult of angst, anguish, anxiety, and overall fear, which, of course, the control machine seeks to inject into virtually everyone all the time. It is now structural to our societal existence. We're going to talk in this first hour tonight about radiation, radiation exposure, radioactivity, how it impacts the human body, the issue that the Fukushima disaster of March 11th, 311, hasn't even begun to fully manifest itself upon the people of Japan and certainly upon you and I. I'll never forget, I guess it was about 10 days after the explosions began at the Fukushima Daiichi number 1 plant, that, and the government, of course, didn't tell us, that in fact, the people in Washington State, Seattle, Vancouver, British Columbia, and parts therein, and parts further east, were all being exposed to what they call fuel fleas, or more properly, hot particles. The average Seattle resident who went outdoors during a period of time shortly after 3.11 inhaled, according to Arnie Gunderson, approximately an average of six hot particles a day. That means those particles went into those people's bodies, into their lungs, and did not come out. We can also call them internal emitters. And ultimately, the only outcome of radioactive internal emitters is cancer. To one degree or another, Sooner or later, can your body beat it back? Maybe. Can you do things nutritionally to help? Probably. Will you? No. Very few will. I would urge you to take turmeric. Uh, it's a, a very, very good product. By the way, in the radiation box at the center column of rents.com is a very important interview I did with Dr. Russell Blaylock, and he lays out his nutritional guidelines for helping to mitigate the effects of inhaled or exposure to radiation. By the way, the difference in internal exposure and external exposure is, is, is interesting. We'll find out if there really is much of a difference. Our guest this hour is Mr. Paul Zimmerman, who is quite an expert in this field. Uh, the central thesis of his presentation is going to be that the science of radiation effects and radiation safety is a fraud. At least in case of environmental releases of radiation, the science was crafted to protect the development of nuclear weapons and the operation of commercial nuclear reactors, not to protect you and me from radiation illness. And as you know by now from listening to this program, every nuclear power plant releases radioactivity every day. And we could talk for a long time on that and probably will again in the future. Paul, welcome to the program. Forgive the long introduction. Uh, thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate the opportunity to finally get an opportunity to talk to you. Well, that, uh, I know many of your guests before have complimented you, and I'd like to uh, add to that that um, uh, you have kept the issue of Fukushima on the front cover and uh, continually uh, popularize it, popularizing it. And uh, it's really a tribute to you and uh, a service to all that go on to your website. Well, thank you. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm honored to be able to do it. Um, I am disgusted beyond words and at, at the disgrace that this country uh, has become in terms of guarding and protecting and informing its own. The lies of the EPA and other government agencies in charge of protecting our health are monumental. This country was severely doused with radioactive fallout and continues to be doused with it from Fukushima. 
Uh, go ahead, Paul. Let's just jump right into it, if you would. You've got a book out called uh, Primer in the Art of Deception, The Cult, Uranium Weapons, and Fraudulent Science. Uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit more about the book, if you would. Uh, well, as you mentioned, uh, the central thesis of my book is that we're being deceived. And what I was able to accomplish in the 10 years that it took me to write the book was that I've been able to pull back the veil and in a simple uh, explanation to the non-scientist, point out the numerous methods by which the radiation protection community and governments deceive people on the health effects of radiation. It's a very sophisticated ruse, and it had to be sorted out in such a way that the average person can understand it. Interesting so term, the radiation protection community. It really is one, and uh, they don't give a damn about our health. Which is astounding. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's an awful lot of uh, interbreeding between the regulators, the ones who set radiation standards, and the users, the ones who are emitting radiation into the environment. Exactly. And so there's not a... Yeah, there's not an objective science. It's been uh, heavily contaminated. And this is what uh, I tried to explain by using the term the cult of nuclear. It was a phrase that I coined in order to try to describe the uh, group of people that are allowing their political agenda to influence the direction of their science, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what uh, uh, the scientific method is all about. It's anything it, it, but objective. Yeah, it has been politicized and corrupted by big money to the extent that really calling it science is doing it a favor. It's not. Uh, it's sure. it's a it's a fraud, as you point out. I'll never forget. And one more little quick anecdote, as as you know, and many of you listening may remember, that right after the nuclear disaster at Fukushima, within weeks, the highest readings in the U.S. you would expect to be right on the West Coast. No, the highest readings in America were registered in Boise, Idaho. The jet stream went over, up, and down, right through Idaho. And what did the APA do? Did the APA spruce up its radiation station they had there? No, they didn't spruce it up. They packed it up and trucked it the hell out of there. They took it away. This, this is criminal. In a way, I could call it genocide and be, be on solid ground. This is absolutely true. I mean, this is the only way we have of knowing the results of a radiation accident, is measuring the radiation in the environment. And uh, all the intrigue that's been used to prevent adequate radiation monitoring and communicating the results of that to the people, as you said, are causing unnecessary illness and death in the population. The idea of a cult of nuclearists uh, is is very elegant in its encapsulation of this problem. It is a cult. These people are driven by money. I suspect some of them are actually driven by ignorance, too, and they do believe that these, these nuclear power plants and nuclear energy is, is safe. Nothing could be further from the truth. If we had gone about to try to invent and devise a means to irrevocably and permanently destroy this planet in terms of radiation, we couldn't have done a better job than the way we have gone about it with nuclear power plants and the non-issue, the non-storage issue. No one talks about of all the spent fuel rods. And we know about this. Yeah. These things are never going away. They're sitting at every damn plant that's ever used them or, a, or a, maybe a nearby collection point, but they're, they're all there. Um. The one thing that you did mention, though, was nuclear weapons. Oh, yeah. Behind all of this facade, sitting very silently, is the proliferation of nuclear weapons and the protection that, that keeps people from revolting against the whole powers that be by uh, deceiving the population as to radiation effects. And we're going to get to a point where either through limited nuclear war or a terrorist attack with nuclear weapons, we're going to be told, oh, there's no problem, the radiation is minimal. Those weapons will be used because of the general uh, denial of radiation effects, which has been perpetrated through the last half century. Exactly. Yeah, exactly right. And this is the same thing with uh, uh, 
depleted uranium weapons. The uh, United States used those with abandon in the wars of the Middle East and uh, very successfully denied to the public that there was any health hazard involved. And you had guardian institutions around the world, the World Health Organization, the Royal Society, the International Atomic Energy Commission, and mm-hmm. on and on and on and on, mm-hmm. uh, putting out uh, false reports that depleted uranium is not a hazard to health. It doesn't cause cancer. It doesn't cause uh, kidney damage, which, which was um, traditionally what was thought was the uh, most prominent result of con- internal contamination of uranium. And thus, it's no problem. But they succeeded in that conclusion only by denying a tremendous amount of new research that's been generated to the first Gulf War. But that's one of the many scams. You just turn away. You don't acknowledge the research that goes against your agenda.